La 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 wait till I get my money right. Oh 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 I had a dream I could go outside and do shit. I woke up and they said no. Oh 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 I had a dream people did the research. I woke up no La 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 people are so stupid. Oh whoa oh, oh. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Welcome to Wednesday. Wednesday. Hump Day. Happy National Chicken Wing Day. Shout out. Saw that was it. Well, time to get some wings out of the freezer. Oh, whoa, whoa. I had a dream I could eat every chicken wing. I woke up. Yes, I can. If you believe you can achieve and succeed, wish it, want it, love it, chase it, the secret, whatever you need, believe it. Jesus Christ, the devil, whoever you pray to, okay? Just do your thing, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I love that song by Kanye West. That is one of the best songs. That Kanye West, that era. Oh, I want it back so much. I miss the old Kanye. Oh, whoa, whoa. I had a dream I could buy my way to heaven. I told God I'll be back in a second. It's so hard for me not to act reckless. Kardashians ruined Kanye. And you know what else? I was thinking about this. We need to create classes, like a, a dedicated class. Fuck this. Uh, what, what's a class we could remove out of high school that was just b -b 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 bullshit? Well, most of them are all bullshit the way they actually teach them. But some bullshit math class, okay, should be replaced. Listen, I use math a lot more than I thought I would have uh, growing up. But basically just simple shit. I'm not really solving for X, mainly. I'm just doing simple addition, subtraction, per percentages, that shit. Interest, I think we should have focused a lot more on the basics so everybody can understand compound interest and credit card interest and all of that shit um, and percentages. Maybe everybody else has it down. Uh, anyway, we need to replace a bullshit class with a research class. Basics to research. It has to happen because the inability of people to research shit before they post it on the internet. God, my golly, flabbergasting. It's insane. It is pure insanity, the things I see people post and don't do. that. You have to like run it through a mill, okay? Listen, I'm guilty of this too. I'll post some shit. Uh... Actually, I don't really post it, okay? I do my research before I post it. I'll support something. I'll see something and I'm like, yeah, that's probably true. But I don't post shit without really, at least doing some vague form of research that it's in this correct direction. Um, but when it comes to important things like uh, our country's health system and things like that, I'm very passionate about researching and making sure that this is correct information because if not i'm on the wrong side of history if you post anything online uh that has a perspective that's just simply not true or fueling the flame of division and uh just not true then you're on the wrong side of history bars called you out stop being dumb um but i was seeing it's insanity. There is, there has to be a class. We have to figure out something because it's not okay anymore. And I think it's important. Listen, shout out to, I think it was YouTube and Facebook. They actually took down this video. I instantly smelled bullshit because I was like, okay, just the way this person is talking, uh, there's no way that this is a doctor who's pretty rational and everything. It was blowing up yesterday. Uh, Emmanuel, Emmanuel Stella. Dr. Emmanuel Stella, uh, she's this, uh, she's part of this group that I don't know how a president of the United States, how this even gets by, but you know, and this is the part of it that I didn't research was, did he, is he actually in support of these doctors that are calling themselves the frontline doctors when in fact, they're not even really frontline doctors. Uh, the lady that everybody was preaching about and saying, this should be the person that replaces Fauci is just a licensed pediatric uh, doctor. She's not, she doesn't practice in an actual hospital. Uh, she's not treat, legally treating patients. Um, and if you did simple Google, you could find out where she actually practices out, practices out of. And it's basically 
a hole in the wall in a shopping outlet and it's called like the Ministry Baptist uh, Center and they sell, uh, it's basically a store and they sell uh, medical stuff like uh, medicine and stuff like that but it's all religious based. There is some insane stuff. And the reason why is a lot of people are saying that this was Trump's new uh, group of doctors. I don't think he actually endorsed this as any part of his actual administration. That I don't know. I didn't do research. But the only thing, the connection I saw was that his son tweeted it. Um, and then it got deleted by Twitter. And good. Uh, because it's completely ridiculous. This is the whole thing is, this is literally my system. I'll teach this class in high school. I don't give a shit. Uh, except I don't want to be around dumbass high school kids, so never mind. Someone can take this and make it a class. Teaching people to look at things through a multivariable domain. Like people take one thing, they put it inside this domain, and only judge the relevancy of that statement based on a sterile environment of that one idea. Rather than you have to look at a person holistically and what they're saying, what their track record is, the statistics and facts behind what they're saying. Like you just have to do research because you can't just judge someone off one thing they say. Okay, well, let's find out some of your other ideas and some of your other beliefs. And this doctor in particular, uh, a terrible person, uh, Stella Emanuel, that's her name. Uh, let me see. Oh, she said she's cured hundreds of coronavirus um, patients. And then she was saying none of them have died. She said she's like treated over like 180 patients. None of them have died. Okay, that's not a big enough sample size of positive cases to actually pull any percentage that would be different than what the United States is doing. Um, I, th I think the percentage was under... 0 0.01 something percentage of people who die from this, the mortality rate, uh, it's definitely under 1%. So if she had even one patient die out of those 180, um, then that would be worse than the mortality rate. So you don't have a big enough pool to actually come up with a percentage of a mortality rate. Um, and this is just something she's saying. We have no proof that she's actually treating corona patients. And the thing is, I don't even know if she legally would be allowed to practice that. Um, but besides that, people took that as gospel. That's the thing is this was all over social media yesterday. Tons of people I know sharing it. And I was like, this is crazy. I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. This is one of those other things that makes me realize I step away from social media. I've like slowly started to detach from consuming it. I just throw stuff out there on it. Like here, you guys can, here, take this bait, take this, take this, take this, um, because I absorb it in a weird way. And I'm like, this is killing me slowly. But this doctor, um, I feel weird even calling her a doctor. She's She showed no proof of anything that she's done. She's saying that uh, hydroxychloroquine with Zithromax uh, and zinc, which uh, Zithromax um, is for like pneumonia. Hydroxychloroquine is a, uh, what is it? What is it? What is it? It's uh, used to treat malaria. I believe it's malaria. It has some people, it has terrible side effects. So if she's, you know, it, it hasn't been proven. And that's the thing. She said, fuck the testing. We don't need to do uh, six months of clinical trials on it. If it works, it works. So it's like, ugh, that's just dangerous. No person who actually holds himself accountable. Um, to their practice would ever say something like that because you have to be responsible at the end of the day you have to make sure the treatment you're giving that sometimes to quote uh the administration sometimes the solution is worse than the problem um but just here's the craziest part about this person is uh when i start seeing people raise someone up and say this should be our new fauci this should be the person and i saw people posting that oh my god I, i'm so emotional watching her preach the truth and stuff like that like literally i'm like oh my god here's some other things this lady believes she believes that uh gynecological problems are caused by people uh dreaming about having sex with demons and witches these are true, true quotes. You can go watch like an hour and a half video of her talking on YouTube. Um, she also said that alien DNA 
is being used as medical treatment. That was another thing she stated in the video. Um, oh, scientists are making a vaccine to stop people from being religious. Oh, and she also said uh, the U.S. government is partly ran by lizard people. Yeah. She also uh, she also says that they're the Illuminati is doing a uh, they have the gay agenda, which they're trying to stop people from believing in God by making people gay. Uh, and that basically she she uses a lot of talk of mixing demons with uh, medication and everything. And when people get sick, it's because they're they're having like demon thoughts and stuff like this. Some weird, weird shit, you know. Um, it's just crazy. And, and that's why this whole long winded statement is like, I would feel pretty silly as a rational person. And granted, I may say some stupid shit every now and then, most of the time. But I'm not, a lot of the shit I say is in jest, you know, uh, tongue in cheek, if you will. But I would pre feel pretty silly if I was really trying to sway people's beliefs by propping up someone like this. Someone, you can't just take part of the argument. You can't just say, hey, we should trust this person. The same person that thinks you're getting a uh, cis and everything on your uterus. Um, I think it's just on you, it is right. Anyway, don't have one. Uh, because of demons and dreaming of having sex with witches is what's causing a lot of these sexual problems. Huh? That's the person you think should replace Fauci? Someone who doesn't think we shouldn't do clinical trials, let's just start treating people. There's no proof that this person has done anything. Um, and it blows my mind because I'll read the comments and maybe it's just that I it's these are these hubs they attract people like-minded people um, but it blows my mind how quick some people are to believe it and I think it's dangerous because um, you're going back if you listen to the episode I talked about Slenderman um, these girls these young girls they tried to kill one of their friends because of a belief in something that was completely crazy and wrong it's you look at stuff happening in Portland and things like that. You see people doing things that are wrong because they believe what they are doing is right. It's not it, when when you start seeing people give the excuse of it's okay to do things wrong if you think you are right. I feel like that's a cop out of responsibility. I feel like that can rationalize a lot. That's you know, that's not the same, but similar to when people do stuff out of anger and you know I, I fuck up if i say something to my girl that's you know i was angry or something and i make a comment or anything i can't use the excuse of i'm sorry i was just angry no i i can do that once and then i'm like i need to learn how to handle myself in those situations because i can't do this and have excuses for my action Granted, uh, when I say comments to my girl, it's usually about like, why can't we have wings seven nights a week? Okay, I don't understand. What are you talking about? Vegetables? Fucking vegetables? Okay. Del Taco is a great source of protein. Okay. That's how my arguments go. What? You're calling Call of Duty a video game? No, I am training for war. I'm not playing games. I am training right now. I am an elite assassin part of the Xbox government, okay? And I'm just waiting for the vaccine from Bill Gates so that I can uh, do his bidding, okay? We all know what's going on with Bill Gates and his conspiracies. Bill Gates is trying to create a super force of soldiers through Xbox Call of Duty. And uh, when they create the coronavirus vaccine, he will inject it into all of us and we will do his bidding, okay? Everybody knows that. That sounds like a rational idea that... Is this legitimately floating on the internet? <clears throat> Y'all ever seen the movie Idiocracy? You should check it out. It's a pretty good movie. Um, let's see. I guess we're sticking in this vein because this was the other thing that I saw. Uh, there is so many 
uh, pedophilia connections in Hollywood right now. And basically you saw that Wayfair thing where they're like buying little kids off the internet. The idea behind that, it's crazy how quick the internet takes an idea and just runs with it and how all uh, Hollywood people are in this weird circle. It's kind of like Pizzagate, if you guys remember that. But that was in the political world. So now it's just... It's like the blob. It's just absorbing so much stuff. And this is like, I think what this is, why it's so crazy right now, this is probably what's most dangerous about the, sh- the government shutting down for a while, is it creates too much time on people's hands that instead of uh, focusing, focusing on something productive, everybody, you know, is just latching on to purpose. You know, everybody's latching on to things that they can get behind that they didn't have time to, or they were preoccupied before. And uh, everybody has a cause now and everybody has a conspiracy and it's so juicy. And the ones I've been seeing are just nuts. You know, there was uh, one that I saw yesterday about Tom Hanks, that Tom Hanks was... Uh, the whole coronavirus thing was a front because he's been on house arrest in Australia because of pedophilia. And then there was even like pictures attached to him, uh, attached. There was pictures of him with, uh, pants on and, uh, it looked like at his ankle that there was, uh, some kind of, uh, ankle monitor, you know, like, like he was on house arrest or something. And it's just like, man, the reaches that people have. And then you read the comments and I'm like, did these people exist before? Or they're just like, they were they were lurking in the darkness of our society. And now it's like the sun got blotted out and they've like risen to the surface. They're just out here now, just <laughs> amongst us. And they're just like, yes, the lizard people press us. <laughs> And they're just like, they're coming for us all way far. You know, what if we all found out that all of this was an attack from Ikea and they were just trying to like take out their next competition of uh, people who sell furniture and shit. Did we ever get to the bottom of that? I remember they were, they were saying like the CEO stepped down, but he didn't and that he was arrested, but Shit's wild on the internet, kids. Shit is wild. I don't want to spend the whole episode talking about real dog shit, but I got to get it off of my chest. Yeah. If you guys have noticed, if you're watching the video, got some new lights set up. I've been practicing, you know, always trying to improve the podcast. Always. I didn't even plug this. I'm wearing a Vanguard audio shirt. <clears throat> Shout out to Vanguard audio. They're not a sponsor, but if you're a musician or someone who does audio at all a uh, great company they create microphones that really cut out the middleman uh, when it comes to uh, great quality sound straight out of the tube uh, I worked with them and uh, I have one of their microphones and they are phenomenal they look beautiful and uh, I use them for all other vocal stuff besides podcasting I use this one the Shure SMB7 no the Shure SM7B is that the fucking name? SM7B. Yeah, SM7B. Stroke. Sorry. Um, this is a broadcasting mic, so the more you know. Fun fact. But uh, I saw this thing. It's been blowing up everywhere, I guess, is that kids are buying alcohol, dressing up as old people with masks on. And you know what? I fucking, I support it, okay? I support it. Um, okay, I don't support minors drinking but i support the ingenuity okay i remember being a kid um how can i incriminate myself right now i probably can but let's just say this is a joke um i had a fake id when i was younger and uh it's funny i got a state id it was it wasn't even a driver's license because i was told that if you get a driver's license that it's like a felony because then you're impersonating a driver like it's dangerous um so i just had a state id and it was from hawaii got my shit a fucking week before fucking super bad came out and i and once the movie came out i was like god damn it 
No one is going to believe that I have a fake ID from Hawaii because of the fucking movie. And sure enough, so many people called me super bad. I would go to the store and I had one time this uh, shout out to this dude in Albertsons in Oxnard. Uh, I went there. I remember I had like, it was like a, I, I, I invited these girls over and uh, I didn't want them because they were like older than me. I was like 19 or 20. They were like mid 20s or something like that. Maybe closer to, nah, they weren't closer to 30s. I don't know exactly. But I invited them over. All my roommates were gone. And it was like we were just hanging out during the day in the hot tub and everything like that. I left them at my place and went to go get the alcohol on my own because I didn't want them to see that I had a fake ID because they thought I was older than I was. So then I go to the store. I have my fake ID. I buy a beer. And the dude at the checkout, he looks at it, looks at me, and goes, okay, super bad. And then hands it back to me. And he goes, straight up, dude you got to get a better fake ID. He says, that shit is trash. I didn't say a word to him. I didn't say a word to him. I just took my alcohol and I left. And he just let me have that moment, you know? But uh, it was funny. I, uh, I I think that's just what kids do. They try. They try. They're going to figure it out. And you know what? My dad would always say a quote growing up. I says, you, you, you can do whatever you want in life. But if you get caught, you're going to pay the consequences. And uh, I was always ready to suffer the repercussions. I think that's a great quote in life in general. That's that you, you, you do what you want, but you're going to pay the consequences for it. Uh, and I remember uh, when I was later on, it was like the week before I was about to turn 21. I lived in Cal, uh, San Luis Obispo and I was going to Cuesta and I was going to transfer the next, next semester to swim for Cal Poly, San Luis Obispo. My life changed. I went to Puerto Rico that next semester. Anyway, bars, back to the story. I had my fake ID and I was going to go buy alcohol. I go to this liquor store and it's just so happened that as I'm about to go to the liquor store, like walking, like walk inside of it, this girl walks in next to me and she's probably 18, 19. She was in college also, but she definitely looked younger and I think I held the door open for her and she said something and I laughed or we laughed and then she went her separate way and then I went the other way uh, in the store. Never saw her again. Uh, Hashtag a love story. The guy who worked there, uh, Indian dude, he saw us walking together and instantly eyes like a hawk on me. I go get like a 30 pack, whatever. Probably Natty Ice, gonna play beer pong. I go up to the front of the liquor store and he's just staring at me i put it on the counter boom bitch i want to buy this didn't say bitch and he just looks at me then he he looks back in the store she goes she with you and i go uh no and he goes you sure and i go yeah so he was already sketched out he thought i was buying someone underage alcohol and uh then he goes Okay, uh, he goes, uh, how are you going to be paying? And then I said, I think I said debit card, and I give him the card. And then he goes, okay, uh, which is a savvy move, which he pulled. You'll find out why later. I give him the card to pay. I'm like, sweet, he's not going to ID me. Then he goes, oh, ID. So then he has my card and my fake ID. So then he goes like this. He looks at it, and he goes... What's your date of birth? I had that shit memorized. Blah, blah, blah. What's your address? Blah, 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 blah. I say the address. And then he goes, okay. And then he, uh, he takes the ID and he scans it. And here's the thing about the ID that I got. It actually scanned when he put it through a thing. So it seemed legit. So he scanned it. Um, and it came back that it was legit. It didn't say it was a fraud for some reason. And then uh, my heart is racing. And then for some reason, he takes it in the back and he comes back to me and he's looking at me and he goes, is this fake? And then I go, no, because technically it wasn't fake. It was fake for me, but it was legit a card. And then he goes, okay. And he starts getting his phone out and he goes, I'm going to call the cops right now. And you're going to have to stay here because he had my card. So no matter what, he could find me through my actual real debit card. Um, and then my heart is racing. He goes, he has his phone out and he goes, I'm going to call the cops right now. You need to tell me if this is a fake ID. 
And then I just look at him and I just go, yes, it is. And he, ta- he takes the, the fake ID. He, he's holding onto it, takes my debit card. He throws my debit card at me, keeps the ID and he goes, get out of my store and I never wanna see you again. And then I had to leave the alcohol too and my fake ID. So I got my fake ID taken a week before my 21st birthday. I was bummed out. But all I did is I went to a liquor store uh, by my house that I was living at and where I knew them. They literally thought I was just some kid from Hawaii going to school. And I would talk to them about the island and shit. I'd be like, hey, coconut. But what's funny is I went back to that, I, that liquor store after I turned 21 and I bought alcohol with my real ID. And I just smiled at him the whole time. Like, yeah, bitch, I'm legal. Now what, motherfucker? Good times. But shout out to the kids that are buying alcohol and masks. Y'all are genius. Um, I saw this is big news in uh, the comedy world. Is that Joe Rogan is moving to Texas? I've had my uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna illuminate some stuff, and may, maybe I've I've said this on a previous podcast about Texas and uh, Joe Rogan moving to Texas is huge because. What it is going to do is decentralize podcasting and stand-up comedy. I think it's amazing. One thing that I haven't liked is uh, how you need to be part of a hub close to LA, close to New York. You know, in between there's some cities that have scenes, but other than those two, those are the two giant hubs of stand-up comedy where you kind of go to get your sea legs, to get uh, your skills, where you network with other comedians, and you can build. Joe Rogan is pretty much the juggernaut of comedy. Now, whether you think Joe Rogan is the funniest comedian, that's up for debate. Everybody has their own opinion. I think his writing is very prolific, and he's got great comedian. I don't, I don't ever take anything away from his comedy. I think he's a phenomenal writer and always, I just, I saw him live before the pandemic, uh, and the stuff he was working on was fucking amazing. Amazing. He killed. And, uh, you know, that's up for debate who the greatest is, who's this. Uh, but when it comes to their footprint in comedy, uh, no bigger podcast, no bigger comedian, no bigger influence in comedy. Okay, they call him the pod father for a reason. He's moving to Texas. Um, This is huge because it's going to turn Texas uh, into a bit of a hub in the sense of, you know, what is it? Uh, High tides make all boats rise. It's going to force Texas to become more of a hub for um, stand up. Now, here's what I'm going to illuminate. Why Texas or why Rogan is moving to Texas, I don't know. Uh, It could be, you know, I've heard him say on his podcast is because of just problems with California. And California has been uh, a weird place. And, uh, you know, and this is part of the reason why I've never really wanted to move to LA. I always kept it in the back of my mind, like, yeah, I should move close to LA and everything, but it's like a rat race. You know, I like doing, I love the Ventura stand up community. I really do. Uh, great people uh, from top to bottom, uh, great crowds, great uh, kinship, brotherhood, if you will, sisterhood. We have some female comics. Um, and it's great. And I, and I like it. And it's no offense to the comedians in L.A., but there's so many in L.A. And I've met a few and, uh, you know, I probably know about 20 to 30 comics in L.A. Uh, personally that are like peers and they're funny people. But the thing is, is that there's so many people that, you know, you, you go to do spots, you could be waiting there for three or four hours to do a three minute set in front of an empty room, you know, where it's, it's rough. And uh, part of my thing is uh, I don't like the LA industry. I don't like uh, Hollywood industry. I don't like Hollywood agents. I don't like the whole process. It's very fake. And to me, it's been a dying industry for a while. You know, I, I think it turned into a business where so many motherfuckers with no creativity have pigeonholed and 
basically exploited people with ideas and creativity and taken it and commercialized it and watered it down. When you look at things like The Mass Singer and all these bullshit reality shows, it is... It's so dumb and it's so mind numbing, the, that mill that they run everything through. There's no real place for stuff to flourish. And I feel like comedy is the last frontier of that, of that free speech of performance and entertainment. You know, you look at the way music is and, and it's definitely pandering to a certain uh, idea. You look at movies and TV and uh, talk shows and reality shows and they're all kind of pandering to a certain Hollywood uh, virtue signaling um, demographic, like these ideologies. And it's just like uh, conform conforming and... Uh, I feel like comedy is the last frontier that doesn't do that. At least, you know, there's some of that within it. But for the most part, uh, you have the titans at the helm like Bill Burr, Dave Chappelle, Joe Rogan, um, other big comedians. I can make a list. I don't want to. But where they are very explicitly for freedom of speech, Andrew Schultz, um, he's a wizard. He's a wizard. He's the one that is doing, I think, the best during quarantine. Uh, he just showed through, if you haven't seen Andrew Schultz uh, videos, they're like five minute clips. I believe they come out every Saturday. They are phenomenal. They are such tight jokes, uh, perfectly weaved into the internet style of comedy. Um, and I think they're beautiful. They're so fucking witty, so smart, so unvirtue signaling, so just real. Um, and it's beautiful. The dude is a fucking workhorse. Uh, I love seeing that. I love seeing dudes like that who um, really are putting in all the work and they're so fucking clever and they're fucking going for it and they don't give a shit. That's one thing that I admire about Andrew Schultz is uh, the way he does his stuff. And it's not pandering like a lot of these John Oliver, a lot of these uh, talk shows, a lot of these like late night with blah, blah, blah. There's such a bullshit format. And then you see during the quarantine that they're trying to do stuff from home. And it's like, nah, bitch, that ain't your environment, okay? You, you, without all the bells and the whistles and the lights and the in, you know, in-house audience clapping and laughing at your bullshit, it's kind of not the same. You know, you're kind of seeing behind uh, the Wizard of Oz, the sheet or whatever it fucking that movie says. Anyway, there's a good metaphor to go in there. But uh, I love, I love where entertainment is going. And I love where... Uh, the idea of decentralizing, getting back on topic, topic bars, rabbit holes, uh, the idea of decentralizing entertainment to where you don't need to be in these two hubs. Um, and this has been something that I've struggled with. Uh, I sound like I'm talking about my sexuality right now, which are always in bars. Um, I struggle with the idea of having to conform to one of the two hubs. That's why, you know, I wanted to move to Texas. I actually lived in Texas for like a year, uh, I believe in like 2017. I loved it. I really did. The food, um, the people there, it was amazing. Um, I was doing music a lot at the time and uh, I loved it. But the thing is, is my girlfriend was living in California and uh, I, I didn't want to be away from her anymore. She's probably listening to this and smiling right now. But anyway, uh, but I, I, I had to move back and that wasn't the only reason why, but it was like, okay, I need to, I need to come to LA and be in this area because I want to push all of this. And it's like, I was living outside of Dallas and it was like, I, I don't know if I can do what I want to do here right now. I'm not, you know, I, my video company wasn't at the level it is now. And, uh, I just didn't have my mind at that level where I was, uh, I thought I could do what I needed to do in Texas. So I moved back. And after about six months or something, uh, the plan was, you know, I was living in Huntington Beach with a buddy. And uh, the plan was after a while, you know, I got tired of Orange County real quick. Uh, I was going to move to Texas. My girl and I were going to move to Texas and uh, we were going to move back to uh, Arlington where I lived in outside of Dallas. And I'd been researching a lot about um, the entertainment industry in Texas and if it was possible for me to work there. Um, 
with what I want to do. And I saw that they had comedy clubs. Not only that, they had a huge, it's one of the biggest markets for voice acting, which, you know, your boy has that voice. Ohana runs family. Family runs nobody is left behind. Lilo and Stitch bars. Um, anyway, so weird. So Dallas was like a reasonable place. And... We literally had just came to Ventura for a buddy's birthday party. Uh, We were planning on moving in like three or four months back to Arlington. And we were standing at the park across the street from where I live now. And just looking at the view and everything like that, I remember my girl and I, we like looked at each other and we both were like, shit. It was like a mind, one of those mind talks. And I was like, we should move here for a little while. And she was like, fuck yeah. Like, who wouldn't want to live at the beach? And uh, we definitely specified it was going to be just for a little while. And, you know, I love Ventura. I really do. Uh, But it was never the plan really to settle here. Because truth be told, dude, I couldn't afford a fucking house here. Dude, I go up my street, $1.4 million for a fucking little small house on a street. I go to Texas. I've been looking at land in Texas for like over a year now, solid. I could get like an acre and a half for like 70000 and just build a dream home. You guys forget, your boy has construction experience. I got like 15 years of construction under my belt, just wasting away. Every now and then I do a weekend warrior project with it. Um, but yeah, so I love Ventura. I really do. I love uh, the friends that I've made here. Dude, I the, the biggest heartbreak is going to be leaving the people that I've become friends with. Uh, and this isn't me announcing that I'm moving to Texas right now. I'm not riding Joe Rogan's t- coattails that hard. Um, but yeah, it, it's the relationships with the people that I've met here that I would miss. Um, I'd miss 10 Planet Ventura so fucking much. Um, and I don't know. I don't know what the plan is, but it's just cool to see uh, things opening up. And this was always, it's kind of crazy. And uh, I've always kind of held the belief that things are going to open up and the internet is going to change everything with what you have to do and where you have to be tethered to. Um, because uh, in a lot of ways, my business hasn't really changed since the pandemic. Like, and I think a lot of people are realizing that and they're, and they're kind of, um, realizing that you don't have to be tethered to a certain job and certain jobs can be done from home. And I hope that anybody going through it during this pandemic and worried about shit that you can figure out ways to make money and to make a living to support yourself, um, on your own where you don't have to have a a boss. That's been like uh, the craziest thing that uh, I think I've realized these past few years is how possible everything is uh, to do things on your own and to create your own boat, you know, going back to great advice that Sam Tripoli uh, said that I really took to heart because like, that's what I've been trying to do this whole fucking time is build a boat big enough to where like the waves won't shake it. Where I'm like, no, I can stand on my own. I can have my own business. I can do what I want. And I don't have to kiss anybody's ass. I don't have to report to anybody. I don't have to have anybody taking out their frustration on me because I'm one of their employees. But I will say this, it's not an easy road. You're gonna deal with a lot of bullshit, a lot of side gigs, uh, a lot of hours. Um, doing shit you don't enjoy to be able to make it reality. But I highly urge everybody, anybody listening to this, if you've been in the fucking middle of the road about wanting to branch off and do your own thing because you're miserable in the life that you're going down, I highly urge you uh, to look into becoming your own boss. Highly urge it. Bars. Boss bars. You tune in next week and I'm like, yep. So I got a salary with this corporate job, got my own cubicle, bars, buy podcasts, not me allowed to do this anymore. Goes against company policy. Yeah, but shout out to Texas. Shout out to Joe Rogan. Uh, I know he listens. So, you know, very exciting stuff. Um, We'll end on this. This was funny that I just saw yesterday. There was a dude who... uh, (laughs) 
he was on a 267 uh, solo selling excursion, you know, where people like uh, sell their boats around the world sometimes. I think that little girl, Greta Thunberg, did it. How dare you? I think she like sailed the world. Uh, everybody like wants to treat her as like a goddess or something. I'm like, dude, she is the most privileged little kid out there selling across the world. I should be in school right now. Oh, on my sailboat. Bitch, I've never even been on a sailboat. I wouldn't even know how to work a goddamn pulley system. I'd be on there just fuck. I'd be like fucking, I don't know, water world or some shit. Just trying to make shit work. Anyway, this guy was on a 267 day excur excursion in the water. No, not being in touch with civilization for 267 days. He came home and was like, so what's up guys? How's everything been? What did I miss? Had no idea the pandemic was happening. That's just insanity to me. That is like the funniest thing ever. Like, could you imagine coming back home and you're just like, hey guys, I'm back. Let's go to the movies. And they're like, oh no, the world's upside down. We're in a race war. Pick a side. Nuts. How crazy must that be? Where you're just like, all I want to do is I just want to see, I just want to hug people. I just want to, to go to a, a restaurant. And I just want to, I want to go to, to a, a concert. And I just want to be in a crowd of people. Nope. Sorry. Can't do it. Can't do it, friend. I must be so crazy. I don't know which is better. I, I would I would assume ignorance is bliss. You're just out there deep in your mind thinking about the good things of life and then all of a sudden you're back and the world's upside down. Basically a zombie apocalypse because no one's using their brain. Bars. No one's researching. Anyway, why'd I have to go back down that rabbit hole? Ladies and gentlemen, I love you so fucking much. Uh... I'm excited, got some projects coming out, and uh, it'll be good. Um, gonna start having a few more guests on in the future. In the future, that'll be 2024. But remember, no matter what, uh, I love you, and I'll see you next week.